Hi friends. It's Tuesday, July 13th. It's in the morning. I just went to the grocery store. I got some zucchini, uh, greens. For the week, I like to go get uh, fresh stuff for the week. So today's topic, <laughs> ridiculous names for symptoms. Ridiculous names, and I see a number of the patients are doing, doing that too, not just the NIH people and CDC people. You know, the crash has been called malaise, fatigue. The newest uh, one I'm seeing, Florida Restaurant Syndrome. You know, if they ever applied something like this, to cancer, AIDS, or heart disease. Oh boy, uh, those that the activists in those fields would have a word or two to say. Like years ago, when I was a nurse during AIDS, uh, before AIDS, it was being referred to as GRID, gay-related immune deficiency. Oh boy, they got in front of the Congress with that one. Uh, so Florida restaurant syndrome, and those of us who were around during. Dr. Bell's study know that that symptom <laughs> is one of the dysautonomia things in ME. If you have ME, you have dysautonomia. Okay. <laughs> and what happens when you feel like crap after you eat? Even no matter what size meal, but the bigger the meal, the worse <laughs> it is, is because blood pools in the stomach when you eat. Okay, and not just in your legs, it pulls in the abdominal organs and the stomach. And no, your legs don't have to look red because they're pooling. Actually, if it looks like that, then you have some venous stasis problems, some peripheral, peripheral vascular disease. Okay, the sun's kind of bright. Anyway, so people that have the symptoms after they eat, whether they're tired, they're crashed, they pass out when they stand up, that's the reason why. And I'll see people saying, well, I should uh, maybe decrease my carbs, this and that. One thing across the board with all diseases, people who take care of themselves do better or fare better with the symptoms, all right? If you're eating cakes and fried food and bread, not going to work. You're going to feel worse. And gluten. My doctor <laughs> was actually voted Dysautonomia International's best doctor of the year. <laughs> when I went to him, the first thing he said was, no gluten. <laughs> no gluten. It was a study I saw in the celiac site that there's a subset of people with ME and CFS who have non-celiac wheat sensitivity or whatever that diagnosis is. And there's blood markers, there's biomarkers. So, uh, hopefully the light bulb, you know, some people will realize you may feel better going to a doctor with expertise in dysautonomia. And it's not just POTS. I hear everybody say and they think dysautonomia is all POTS. I have NOH. <laughs> Uh, NOH, I talk about NOH, neurogenic orthostatic hypotension. If you look on the list of symptoms for orthostatic hypotension, and actually the guy at NIH, NIH is autonomic guy, I forget his name, Dr. Goldstein or something, in his video, I saw him referring to the symptom as Florida restaurant syndrome. Really, they got to cut this making light out of the symptoms because there are people, if they fall, stand up and fall, they can hit their head. And the older they are, actually any age. Some people, they have a head injury and they start that slow decline to the end. And then they have a whole bunch of other symptoms. They don't know what the heck is because they have a head injury that's internal. It doesn't show. So they need to stop the ridiculous name for these symptoms. I'll tell you, I tell people, and I, and I wrote a blog, I wrote three blogs on the topic of malaise, don't say it. That is not your crash, honey. Really, and I was a nurse. 
when I first saw malaise on the list of symptoms, I'm like, there's no malaise in this illness. That was back in 1994. And you know, I thought it was a typo. I said that in one of my last videos. It was never a typo. I was shocked to find out they really meant that. So, I notice I see people who are sick 10 years and less. You weren't around Dr. Bell and uh, you don't look at those early studies. Uh, Dr. Bell did that study with Dr. Streeton. If you look up Dr. David Streeton, he was considered the father of orthostatic disorders. Orthostatic intolerance is POTS, orthostatic hypotension, uh, neurocardiogenic syncope. The passing out is neurocardiogenic syncope. It's not that Victorian lady thing, you know, where you see that they've been referring to over a century. I did a blog with that picture. I think it was one of my malaise blogs. One of those pictures of the Victorian lady, you know, with the, with the handkerchief or something, you know, laying back on the couch. These symptoms need to be taken seriously. You know, some pe you know, there are people that there are treatable or you can do much better than what you're doing now. You know? So, in order for us to stop hearing that, everybody has to start referring to the right symptom name. Uh, and yes, if you have ME, you have dysautonomia. The blood's pooling in the stomach. Your autonomic nervous system uh, does not work properly. Your blood circu isn't circulating properly. And then when you stand up, about a liter of blood goes to the bottom of half of the body and if you're pooling in your stomach, you, you can pass out. You can get tachycardic. Uh, well, I hope that's helpful. I'm home, I gotta put my greens away. <laughs> so, I hope you have a good day or as good a day as you can. And remember, I love you, God bless, and I'll see you on the Facebook, okay? All right, have a great day.